Hello everybody and welcome to this video that is going to be a series in how to make a chapbook since that is a question I get all the time which is good like I'm not trying to say anything bad about getting the question in fact the more stuff like this out there there is the um, I think the more awesome crap that people will put out and just like getting away from the whole like things have to be a certain way you know um, that's such a huge thing for me. But one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about, um, about this, especially if you're not familiar with chat books and stuff like that in more recent times, I, I guess I would say from like the eighties, maybe even the seventies up through today, the chat book scene has kind of become the fanzine scene or zine because and a lot of this kind of died out when the internet started but like with all things because like a lot of people were just like oh i make zines but now i can just have a blog and do all the stuff i was doing in my zine on my blog and then i don't have to pay for nothing um that's kind of how that happened but i really feel like over the last 10 years especially that there has been a i don't know like that what what was old is now new again kind of thing like there is a personal feel when you deal with like zines and chat books that you don't get from a website and so because there are so many crafty people out there and people who dig like scrapbooking and making stuff and cutting paper and drawing pictures and the whole thing there is like a huge like void that the internet created when people stopped making zines. Now, I said fanzines, if you remember. Because back in the day, there were magazines. There still are, but I'm trying to illustrate something for you here. And then there were people who started, like, fan clubs of stuff. And so what these people would make would be, like, newsletters that would go out to everyone in the fan club on the mailing list. And, like, we're talking, like, science fiction, back in the 30s kind of shit, okay? Then what ended up happening was um, when the Mimeo machine, the Mimeograph, came out, this made it really easy for a lot of people to do a lot of cool stuff. So you had people who were doing the fan club stuff making these little magazines or fanzines later to just be known as zines but fanzines where the people in the club you know would write about whatever they're talking about so um there was a really big uh there's been a few different like robert e howard um fanzines there's been a few edgar rice burroughs fanzines some lovecraft fanzines um, some Star Trek fanzines, like a ton of stuff like that. And so what you would get is people write articles, draw pictures, say funny stuff, talk about things that happened at the last con that they went to and stuff like that. Just little things, you know. And this was pretty awesome. When the... And so you, you basically had two lines there. You had the people in fan clubs making fanzines. And then you had the people who wanted to be publishers and just didn't have the money or means to be able to do a full-fledged magazine do these things called little magazines. The littles, okay? And those were like, like Trace, Olay, Hearst... Um, the Outsider, uh, Wormwood Review, things like this, okay? You had all that stuff. So those were the two areas people went in. Um, and so the actual zine community, a lot of that was, again, fan stuff. And when bands started playing and the Xerox machine came out, this is when I got into it, like, I could go to a show, take pictures of all the bands at the show on, like, a disposable camera, um, interview a band with, like, a little tape recorder with the tiny tapes, go home, send the camera to a one-hour photo place, 
write out in Sharpie, <laughs> write out the interview I did with the bands and then talk about the show I was at and how cool it was. And then I would get the photos back, cut them, tape them into the thing and go make copies at Kinko's. And we've talked about this before. So that's the whole idea with like a zine and a fanzine. And then what the people who are putting out little magazines started doing, like some of them like had greater aspirations and would find a poet that was, or a writer who was so fucking good, they wanted to put more of their stuff out, not just like have like one short story or one poem in a magazine. So then they started going, okay, well, you know, this is what our stuff looks like. Maybe we can do this and put it out like this. A little stapled chapbook um, of just this guy's work. And that's how that kind of stuff started happening. And so from, I would say, the late 50s through early to mid 80s, stapled chapbooks from... Um, little magazine presses were like a legit thing. They were all over the place. Okay. And then I would say somewhere in the seventies, some of these little magazines started getting a big enough like subscription base. And if they stayed around long enough, they could actually afford to get some like offset perfect bound copies of a, of a slim volume of poetry. Okay. And the chapbook term stuck. And I don't know if, like, what came first, the chicken or the dick? I don't fucking know. I don't care. Okay. But it basically turned into this thing where, like, if a book was under, um, I'm trying to remember the number, if it was under a certain amount of pages, like, um, I don't know if it was 40 or 60. Or something like that. That was a chat book. If it was like less than 20, it was something else. Like a pamphlet or um, an artist book or um, a brochure or something. I don't, I don't really know the correct terminology there. And then anything over that, I guess, would be like a book. But like I've seen people put out 80-page books and call it a chat book because it's tiny. Like, it's a short, little, small, pocket-sized book. And they're like, oh, this is a chat book. Well, okay, whatever. Call it whatever you want. So, th this whole thing about chat books and zines and, like, where's what? Where does one end? Where does the other one begin? It doesn't even really matter. And then when... I'm trying to remember when this started taking off. I want to say, like, 2013. I'm probably wrong, but, you know. But, like, um, Perzines... Okay. And you're like, what the fuck's a persine? A persine is a personal zine. So it's like writing from you. And the funny thing is, most of these persines are poetry. Almost every time. Like there there are times when it's not and it's just like someone telling the story of like how they came out or um something horrific that happened to them or something really cool that happened to them. But the Perzine community, and like Google it, like look it up, go on Etsy, look up Perzines and all this other shit. Like a lot of my chat books, you could call Perzines. Like they're handmade and it's a bunch of stuff about me, you know? So it's like personal shit like that. Um, but I think one thing that a lot of zine zinesters people who do the zines try to do more of is all handmade stuff so like you're not going to see as many things like where someone went into photoshop and like typed something up and all this other shit it's going to be more handwritten photocopied hand-drawn photocopied kind of thing so that might be a distinction you can throw in there the bottom line is there is no distinction for anything. Call anything whatever you want to call it. If you want to call this a Maserati, knock yourself out. I'm not going to care. Like, I wrote poems and now I'm putting them out. That's it. Like, it doesn't matter to me. So, um, think about that for you. Like, does 
what you call it really matter to you? Like, do you want to know like the exact specifications of all of these things? Because like you could Google stuff and go on Wikipedia and all this other stuff, but just know that all the stuff that you see on there that is going to be told to you as if it were an absolute usually aren't. And like, it's just like everything is so loose you know, like it could be 30 pages, it could be 40 pages, you know, so decide what you want to do, like, or what you want to even call it, if any of this sounds interesting to you, okay, and then what we'll do in the next video is, um, I guess, talk about the next step, now that we've had a very small little history of chat books, and now we will learn other stuff about it, so, I'm sure there will be a playlist of this, and I'm sure it'll be here somewhere. So, type hard, everybody, and um, I will talk to you very soon. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.